Hey guys! Welcome to the fifth episode of Zooming In with Gen Z. I'm your host, Haley Taylor Schlitz. Thank you for being here, viewers new and old. Now let's get into this. Belly button rings. How many of you guys want or have a belly button ring? Well, InStyle is on to us. Hear this quote from InStyle. Belly rings were popularized in the early thousands by artists like Britney Spears, only to be deemed tacky and distasteful when pop by popular culture a few years later. But with Gen Z spearheading the return of low-rise jeans while canceling skinny jeans, the navel piercing's return seems almost inevitable, considering the younger generation's obsession with nostalgia. Do you guys think we have an obsession with nostalgia? I can see that. I do think we like a lot of vintage or older trends, but as they say, trends recycle, so maybe that's why. I'll have to watch the trends on TikTok and Instagram more closely and give you guys an update on what I think. From crypto to close, hear this quote from Vogue Business. With sophisticated authentication, resale platforms enable consumers to trade luxury goods securely. This has created an investment mindset in consumers who could buy expensive or rare clothes and accessories and sell them later, maybe even at a profit for the more collectible items. StockX is modeled entirely on the idea of high demand consumer goods as alternate asset classes. One of the big storylines over the past years is how these alternate asset classes have caught fire. People are starting to see consumer goods differently. Gen Z cares about the cultural significance of clothes and accessories. Where traditional investments are faceless, investing in fashion enables Gen Zers to align with certain brands or musical artists. The stock X customer is overwhelmingly young and overwhelmingly attuned to, cult to current culture. <laughs> I really love this. I love how companies and brands have their eyes on us and are getting it right. Investment on its face has its perks and purposes, but it is much more meaningful to invest in brands and ideologies that you align with. Not only are you getting the perks in of investing, but also supporting those you love and amplifying their voices. Check out StockX if you're interested. Driving a double top line. To build on that, hear this quote from Ad Week. They have high expectations of businesses. 63% of Gen Z said it's important that companies become aggressive and visible in addressing the big challenges facing society today. This is why Gen Z is set to drive what we are calling the double top line of purpose-driven economic value to propel the double bottom line of financial performance and social impact. A consumer premium, the willingness to pay more for purpose-driven brands, and an employee premium, the willingness to earn less to be part of a purpose-driven company. Out of the respondents, 65% said they were more likely to pay more for the purpose-driven brand and would pay on average a 48% premium. Also, 49% said they were likely to accept a lower pay at work at the purpose-driven company and on average would be willing to earn 20% less. Like I said, they have their eyes on us. I think Gen Z has done a great job demonstrating our passion for human rights, mental health, the environment, and activism as a whole. I love that we stand by what we say, we believe in what we say, we demonstrate what we say, and we act on what we say. Now, you know the drill. Guys, this Gen Zer is out of this world. He is reaching for the stars and is getting all of them. And no, I don't mean the gold star stickers, although I understand the confusion since Elliot Tanner is only 12 years old. But when I say reaching for the stars, I mean the literal stars. I'm very excited to welcome episode five's inspiring guest to the Zoom room. Elliot is 12 years old and a rising senior at the University of Minnesota. He is majoring in physics with a minor in mathematics. I told you, he's reaching for the stars and absolutely grabbing all of them. Hi, Elliot. Thank you for being here with us today. Hi, nice to be here. I'm glad I could be here with you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, to jump right into the questions because after reading that intro, I'm sure everybody is really, really curious. Okay, so you're majoring in physics at the University of Minnesota. But why physics? Physics is great because you get to uncover some of the secrets of the universe. In particular, I'm trying to look for any new types of flavors of neutrino besides the ones that we know now, electron, mu, and tau neutrinos. Okay, what's a neutrino? <laughs> a neutrino is a small particle that doesn't interact with many things. It interacts very rarely with matter, so it requires large detectors. Thank goodness the law of cosmic rays will bring you with a lot of neutrinos. 
wow, I hope you guys are listening. You could probably learn a little bit of physics if you pay attention. <laughs> okay, so were you always interested in science? Well, as long as I've been able to read and count, yes. <laughs> that's great. This is a, a long passion. That's, that's always so inspiring. So what is it about physics specifically rather than other science fields that motivates you to pursue this path? Like what after looking at all of the science fields made you choose physics? Well, starting with math, I found that math comes with a lot of special cases. If you find that a function might be not continuous or if it has a sharp edge that isn't really physically possible, then math still has to take care of that. But with physics, you get to have all the benefits of math with all the benefits of intuition as well. With chemistry and biology and psychology and those further down the line, they just don't quite have enough math. Mm -hmm. or it to really seem interesting for me. Absolutely. I 100% understand. So what are some of the biggest physics questions you hope to solve? I know you mentioned neutrinos earlier. Is there one area or question that you really want to focus on? Well, in terms of areas, I want to work a lot in high energy physics, particularly the theoretical kind where I get to work on trying to solve some of the different equations and reactions I need to solve in order to create new theories for quantum mechanics. Wow, that's fascinating. So earlier we were talking about math and how you really appreciate the fact that physics has a lot of math in it. Uh, why is your minor math though? Like, is it, did you want more math on top of that? And then a part B to this question, have you always had an interest in math or did this interest spark as you got into physics? Math and physics and science in general all came around that time when I started reading and counting. Originally, about two years ago, I was actually a major in math, but then once I saw some of like the special cases, I decided to switch to something that required more intuition like physics. Mm -hmm. I kept my major in math, my minor in math, sorry, because I thought it was still an interesting subject and I had plenty of credit so I could still get a minor too. Absolutely. Wow. Are you guys hearing that? He has plenty of credit, so he might as well just put on a minor in math while he's at it. That's amazing. <laughs> okay. So I saw your interview on Good Morning America where they asked you about being so young and in college, and you shared with the host how the biggest challenge is sitting behind people who are taller than you in class. Uh, you also pointed out that you felt comfortable with your older classmates. How do you feel about the constant focus by adults about you fitting in with your college classmates? Do you think it's adults worrying too much or do you think it's like a very valid concern, a very like question that you were concerned with yourself maybe? Well, I do feel like it's very difficult for an adult to concern too much about a child. It's only in their nature, mm -hmm. but it seems to me like it's mainly just that it works actually quite well. You my peers decided that I am basically just a 20 something year old person. I think quite well and I get to interact socially very, very often. That's great, that's great. Building on socialization, what about people your own age? Do you get socialization with them? Well, yes, I do. I get to play a lot with my friends. In fact, in just the other room, I'm with my, one of my other friends. He might even be in the comments right now. <laughs> well, hi, Elliot's friend. That's great. And I, and I hear this question a lot, especially with students who are accelerated about socialization with their own peers. So um, it's really good for the adults to hear that uh, you do have socialization with kids your own age. So uh, like you said, they worry, and that's probably very comforting. Um, yeah. Speaking of parents, uh, what advice would you give to parents who, who are concerned about a young person going to college and socialization and all of that? Well, I just have to say that college students are very, very nice. And <laughs> just as long as you just like monitor your kid every once in a while and just make sure that they are talking to people that they really enjoy talking to, then I bet they, they will do great. Yeah, that's great. You guys hear that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, speaking of being a kid, you also appeared on Kids Save the Darndest Things with host Tiffany Haddish. How was that experience? Kids Save the Darndest Things was one of my favorite shows I was ever on. <laughs> that's I great. Got, being backstage was very exciting. I got to see some of the other kids, and while I was on, I even got to have my own little set that had some bookshelves and nice squishy chairs. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Tiffany, 
was great to talk to as well. That's great. That's great. Yeah, and she the entire show. I love watching it. So I'm really glad that it's a great experience backstage too. <laughs> yeah. So you have a very personal connection to Big Bang Theory. You flew to California pre-COVID to hang out with the cast of Young Sheldon. How was that? How was what was like your favorite part of the trip? <laughs> I'd have to say that my favorite part of the trip was being able to meet Ian Ar Armitage, which is the kid who plays Young Sheldon in this show. He's very nice, and I got to go to a trampoline park, Sky Zone, with him. I'd have to say that that was my favorite part. He's a very nice person to be around. Great, great. That's that's awesome, because he looks like a fantastic person to be around on TV, so I'm glad that that translates. <laughs> yeah. So, The Big Bang Theory was one of my favorite shows. I love how they celebrated academia and critical thinking. Are you a fan of the show, and if, show, if so, uh, who was your favorite character? Well, yes, I was a big fan of Big Bang Theory. I quite enjoyed Sheldon Cooper from the show. He might be seem just like the stereotypical smart guy, but I feel like it's still very, very important in order to celebrate mm -hmm. academia and critical thinking, just like you said. Yeah, he, absolutely. He's very fun. Yeah, he makes the show, I think. He's also my favorite character. I, I love his personality. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so do you believe that we need more shows that celebrate critical thinking like Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon? Well, I think that it's very, very important for you to be able to get all the different types of shows that celebrate critical thinking. Mm -hmm. I feel like the world could definitely do with more shows like Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon, so that way it gets more sort of worldwide appeal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. I second all of that. Okay, so Elliot, what is next for you? Where do you want to take your education journey? Or is it, you know, go and work somewhere after you graduate? Like, what's the plan? <laughs> after I graduate, the plan is to go to get a doctorate at some school. I want to become a professor in physics at some point. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. I If I ever were to somehow end up in a physics class, I wanted to be your physics class. <laughs> yeah. okay. So coming up later in the episode after this is, you know, the entire interview has come to a, uh, come to a close, I am going to discuss Simone Biles, who has not only not been celebrated enough for her amazing accomplishments, but has been getting challenged for even doing them. Uh, I know so many students such as yourself are asked, like, what's the hurry? Why don't you slow down and, like, be a child? Like, how do you respond to those type of statements by adults? Well, this ties back to one of your first or second questions. The answer is that I do get to be along with a lot of my friends. I get to play Minecraft and Dungeons and & Dragons. And mm -hmm. just, uh, like, 15 minutes ago, I was playing cards with one of my friends, too. Yeah, that's great. I love it. it it's really important because I know that there are some adults out there who are less concerned and more judgmental. And so it's really important for them to recognize that this experience is perfect for you and you're getting everything you need. So um, yeah. my very last question, uh, what is your favorite like physics facts or most like interesting thing you know about physics so that all the viewers can leave this episode knowing a little bit more about physics? <laughs> Well, that's a very good question. I'd have to say that my favorite physics fact is that there are three types of non-neutrino leptons, the electron, of course, the muon, which I might have talked about earlier, and the tau particle, but only the muon, which comes from cosmic rays along with tauons and electrons, can reach the surface of Earth because the electrons are too light and they get hit around by atoms and the tau particles decay too fast. Wow. That's fascinating. It really yeah. makes me want to go do some external research on physics now. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> well, that wraps up the interview. Thank you so much, Elliot, for taking time to join us today. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I don't know about you guys, but his light is so bright that I'm seeing stars. Hopefully, uh, you, Elliot, will join us here again so we can discuss even more of your otherworldly accomplishments. <laughs> Okay, as usual, we will close out our show with a segment called Zooming In. Let's take a look at who is being magnified for being magnificent. Simone Biles. <laughs> we know and love her. She is amazing in and out of routines. She is the top athlete in the world. Yeah, I said it. I mean, did you guys see the vault? Wow. 
Even with all of her well-earned success, there are those who challenge her greatness. As a young woman, she faces barriers even as she makes history. Hear this quote from the New York Times. The judges scoring her, however, were not so impressed. Despite the most difficulty, they gave it a provisional scoring value of 6.6, .6, close to what Biles' other votes have received. That, limit, that limited the points available for performing it successfully, a point that was frustrated that uh, frustrated Biles suggested was unfair to her. I feel like now we just have to get what we get because there's no point in putting up a fight. They're not going to reward it. She said of the judges and ultimately the International Gymnastics Federation, which has the final word on starting values for new volts done in competition. So we just have to take it and be quiet. Despite not being properly rewarded, Biles, the defending Olympic champion in the all-around, said she would continue doing them. When she asked why, she quickly answered, because I can. Did you hear that? Her short and brutally honest answer was, because I can. For the past couple of years, girls, especially Black girls, have watched as Black women like First Lady Michelle Obama, Vice President Harris, Venus Williams, and many more were openly attacked for being the greatest version of themselves. Instead of celebrating the history that Vice President Harris or Simone Biles continue to make, we see many in the media and in our society attack them for their audaciousness to excel. Let me share with you, Black girls want everyone to know that we see it. We saw what happened this week with Naomi Osaka. We saw what was done to Vice President Harris and First Lady Michelle Obama. We saw the challenges to Simone Biles. We are here to let everyone know that, not, that we not only see it, but we're going to speak up and support them. Simone Biles is such an inspiration to us all. And I hope that Generation Z girls, especially black girls, will use her as an inspiration to be audacious and ambitious in their own lives. If you're ever doing something amazing and somebody asks you why you're doing it or what is the rush or why bother or why work so hard, remember Simone Biles and respond with her powerful words, because I can. Your Zoom call to action? Do something amazing and positive just because you can. Want to learn a new violin piece? Want to get better grades? Want to do community service or bond with your siblings or exercise more? Want to train your dog or learn a new language? Want to be the first in your family to go to college? Do it because you can. On that inspiring note, episode five of Zooming In with Gen Z is officially at a close. Thank you so much for joining today. Like always, come back in two weeks for episode six. Same time, same place. We will have some exciting news and some exceptional Gen Zers for you. A shout out of thanks to Citizen Ed for providing us with this platform to talk about the issues we care about. <laughs> See you guys in two weeks. All right, how do I zoom out on this thing?